what we're going to do this morning is to try and help you. Because for those of you who have to go out there and talk about intellectual property to other people, we need a new way to make this a little more interesting, not just for them, but for ourselves. I mean, if you've got to go out and do this week after week, you want something new, different, and maybe something there that you don't expect to happen during a session. Two parts. One is, we're going to do this live, me actually engaging you, and then we're going to do it up there. Because that attempts to capture what we're going to do for the first half of this session. But again, what I'm trying to do is to help you communicate IP. You don't have to be intellectual property experts, in my mind, to communicate the advantages and benefits of IP. Think about what enforcement deals with. Enforcement deals with raids, seizures, arrests, uh, destruction of goods, lots of things that are really negative if you think about it. What we want to accentuate and emphasize, however, we keep saying it, the benefits and the advantages of IP. When do we talk about that? We keep saying to people, IP is good for economic development. How do we explain that? How do we show that? How many of you have ever wanted to write a novel or read a book about writing a novel? Very good. If you have, one thing you will know is this. Do not tell, show. Show what you mean through the words. Well, in this case, we're going to try to do that, and hopefully you'll see where I'm headed uh, as we go through this. But the real question is for that beginner, small, medium guy. How do we show the advantages, disadvantages, or the benefits or so on of IP to people like that? How do we get young people to understand that, gee, maybe there's something in it for them with regard to building that IP, okay? So that's where we're going to go. Real simple question. Take your minds off of being a government official for a little while. If you're in the private sector or you want to become your own boss, entrepreneur, what business would you want to start? What would you want to make? Anybody? Oh, okay. So you want to be an event, uh, I don't know, programmer, something like that. All right, remember. Now, what I'm asking you is if this is your business, what would you start? What kind of business would you start? You'd steal. Oh, 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 you'd, st okay, you mean legitimate, S T E E L. Okay, you make steel. All right. Anybody else? Sandwiches. Okay. Well, I'm going to broaden that just a little bit, okay? Since I'm standing here with this, I get to do a little bit of that. All right, so you're saying Dali. All right, anybody else? Furniture designer. What, is there any limitation as to furniture? Any kind of furniture? Oh, okay. Small, well, we'll say small tables and so on. Uh, all right, we've got four. Let's vote. How many of you, how many of you want to go into the event programming business, booking business? How many people want to go into the steel business? One, two, th well, three, yeah, okay, good. I'd like to see you vote for your own. Uh, how about the deli business? Hmm. All right, and how about the furniture? I think this one has it. All right. Now, the question, first question, are there other delis already, sandwich shops already in business? All right, now, you guys are all going to be part of this business, so put on your thinking caps. All right, so... What are some of the basic things that you are going to need to compete with this new business that you're going to go into? What do you need? Huh? All right. What else do you need? Kitchen. All right. Let's broaden. Uh, that's good. What else? Location. What? Uh, well, you're getting ahead of yourself a little bit. I'll put it down, but let's stay basic for a moment. What else do you need? Marketing plan. Marketing plan. Ah, how about that? You need the food, the basics. Uh, marketing plan. Huh? Capital. Ah, well, you do need that, don't you? Uh, did I tell you, all of you, since you're all part of this business, you've all put in a little capital yourselves to get it started. Uh, I know what that's like. I've done it a couple times. All right, so you got to do that. Um, what's the name?
Delicious. <laughs> Anybody else? I mean, hey, it's your company. Deli. Deli Delicious. Anybody else? By the way, you get to vote again, so bring on the ideas. Huh? Yummy. Yummy. Anything else? Think, think, think. This is your business. I think it's taken. If you're telling me it's around the corner and that's the name, it's taken. This is time for you. This is your business. How many people want Deli Delicious? Wow. One, two, three, four, five. I'd say that's the majority. All right. So that's the name. All right. So we've got a name. Now, let me ask this question. What are you going to need in this kitchen? Be a little more specific. Go ahead. I mean, just for a minute. And where are you getting all this stuff? Home Depot. Home Depot. <laughs> all right, now wait a minute. You're getting all this stuff from other places, right? Economic activity, right off the bat. Think about that. Economic activity. You have to put money in other people's pockets in order to get all this. All right, think about that. Right away, as a new business, when we talk about economic and commercial activity, it starts right away, okay? So when we talk about economic contribution, economic growth, benefits to an economy, every new business is going to need something. And when they need whatever that something is, they have to pay for it. It's money in the pocket of another business. It's money that business wasn't getting until you decided to go into business. Think about that, all right? So you've got that. What else are you going to need? Who else is in that chain, in that economy? Huh? Well, all the lawyering stuff, all the bureaucratic state and federal and all that, think about it in a more practical commercial activity sense. Huh? You've got people. Who else? What else? Ah, rent. What else? We got the location, which is here. Uh, be more specific, because when you're talking to people out there, I want you to make sure they see that connection, hear that connection. Distributors, meaning truck drivers, meaning delivery people, meaning in some countries, people on bicycles, depending on the country you're in, right? Think about that. Uh, bread being delivered in the trunk of a car. That was in Armenia a few years ago when I was there. I decided not to buy any bread, but that's okay. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a way. It's, it's these people, all these people. So you've got to think about it from the perspective of this is, oops, I can't spell, Deli Delicious. And everybody else, you've got to, you've got to send money out to supplies, distributors. What else are you going to need for this business? Some of the basics. What else are you going to need? <laughs> uh, uh, you're going to buy lots of office stuff. You've got to buy uh, equipment. So remember, in this case, all those dollars going out, all those dollars going out to other people in that commercial economic system, that local system, all the people who are getting money that they weren't getting maybe two weeks ago or a week ago. And all those people hoping to keep getting money from you. So you've got all of that. Now, let's talk about um, competing. How are you going to compete again? How are you competing against everybody else that's already out there? All right. Now, when we talk about marketing, let's be more specific because it's very general. All right. Where and what? Where else? What else? Online. Online. Ah. What else and where else? Radio. TV. Huh? Flyers. Paper. Signs. Billboards. Okay. And on this stuff, what kinds of content are you going to have? Ooh, coupons. Testimonials. Well, let's think about this at the very beginning. You, you're just getting going here. Uh, we've got all this stuff. 
Think about what, what's, what kind of things do you tend to see in an ad? Okay, so you've got pictures. What else do you have? Your, this name right here? Oh, oh, whoa. A logo, jeez. How many people thought about that logo thing? Now, let me ask you a question. Uh, are you saying you want to tie a logo to this Deli Delicious? Absolutely. So you, you've got to get somebody, unless one of you, you want to save expenses at the very beginning. I know, uh, but, you know, sometimes you've got to do these things, and uh, you might have to pay somebody, so you've got all this stuff going on. All right. So let me ask this other question then. You've got all this going on. Now, we're talking about a deli. Where is your potential intellectual property right now, so far? What is your potential intellectual property? Huh? Is the sandwich? Huh? Well, hold on. Let's, I'll start here real quick. You said a logo and name. So what kind of IP are we talking about there? Trademark, thank you. And if you register it, all right. What else do we potentially have? So, oh, oh, I didn't know we had a secret sauce. Okay. Secret sauce. Okay, that's good. All right, so you've got trade secret possibilities here. What else do you have? Well, the design of the sign, are we talking about this or something else? Ah, Josh is helping us here. He said you've got an image. What are we talking about there? Ah, copyright. Well, you've got pictures, you said, on the ads, right? So you've got pictures, so you've got potentially copyright. Now think about, think about all this marketing material you, you, you mentioned here. You said, well, you have a domain name, but a domain name falls into a potential couple categories because we could be talking about here, trademarks, or if you're talking about your website, what else are you talking about? Content. Content. What does that trigger? Copyright. All that stuff, where? How about all the stuff in the newspaper that you put in? TV ads, radio ads, your website content. All that stuff. All that stuff. The cookbook. Oh, somebody said um, flyers. Flyers. Uh, when people come in, do you have a menu? Do you have a menu? Yeah. Uh, has anybody ever looked at a menu when you go to the restaurant? You ever see that copyright notice on it? Oh, yes. The distinctive layout of that copy, uh, the, the menu, the way it's laid out. Maybe you have pictures. Maybe you have little slogans. All that stuff combined, right? So you've got the possibility of this business. Now, we're talking about a deli here. Think about this. We've got all this potential copyright, the imaging. We've got the potential of trade secret. We've got this. All right, now let your imagination roam just a little bit more. Uh, think about what's in your location. What else is inside this location that you're actually physically using? Huh? The machinery process. But think about what happens if, and I, I'm going to help you here, what happens if you, you need to mess around a little bit with all this machinery? You need something to do something different than any of the machines you currently have. Think about that. Companies buy machinery or look at machinery and say, wait a minute, the machinery we have off the shelf cannot do what we'd like it to do. So what do they do? They design. They change it. They come up with a new machine. That's where you're possibly having your potential patents, even in a deli. So one of, one of the things I want you to think about is when you're talking about intellectual property to other people, or when you're thinking about IP, think about the possibilities here, even when we're talking about a business that's not high tech. It's just a simple, everyday service offering. But yet, that simplicity does not take away from the potential 
of all this intellectual property. All of the economic and commercial activity generated by your business. Uh, let's see. You wanted to have a deli location? Most likely you needed carpenters to come in and do something with that location. You probably need to buy at least some furniture if you wanted a couple tables and chairs. What does that mean? That turns into, oh, you need some, you, whether it's paper plates or whatever, silverware or plasticware. Think about that overall. Every time there's a, oh, I hate to say this, every time there's a new Starbucks on the corner, think about all that little stuff that goes on. They need yet another location? Yes, but they need the tables, the chairs, the everything, all that stuff. You know, we don't have to have a multinational company come in. It's just somebody local who wants to start a business that generates a lot of new economic and commercial activity. So when we talk about IP related to economic development, think about this. You are using these things to grow. Every ad that you ever see, what's, what is something that is common to every ad you see? Television, radio, on a website. What is something that is common to um, basically everything we see when it's a company providing a product or service? How about their trademark? You're always, almost, I can't think of an ad that doesn't have somebody's trademark. Because how do they promote themselves? I mean, can you imagine walking down the grocery store? You know, you're down the aisle, you're in the tooth, toothpaste area, and you have a thousand white tubes. That's never going to happen, right? There's always, you know, Colgate, Aquafresh, Crest. I mean, just go down that list. They've always got a trademark. Think about walking down, you know, go down into the mall. Think about what you see sticking out at you. Think about the lights that are on at night in any big city when you're down in the, you know, shopping district. Trademarks. How are they promoting themselves? How are they hoping to get your dollar? It's based on the IP that they're trying to build. Yes, we call it brand recognition, but it's on the intellectual property. It's on the intellectual property. Think about that. They are standing right on top of that. That's what they're relying on. Think about that. Who else is a beneficiary? Who else is that beneficiary based on all this stuff we're talking about? Thank you. Now remember, this is where once you start connecting these dots, those government people sitting in the room, how many of their salaries depend upon that tax revenue coming in? Most countries, I mean, not all, but most countries do pay their salaries through tax revenue. So think about the fact that the guy that sold you all that kitchen equipment, the business that distributes the goods, all their employees that have more revenues coming into them because of your business pay more taxes to these guys. Oh, and by the way, yes, you're paying these guys if you start making money, of course. If you don't make money, no. But at the end of the day, you do need some of this. The people, the newspaper, the TV, the radio people that are getting more ad revenue from you, paying taxes, that's part of the system, right? Uh, now, what I'm going to do is switch over because there's a different way to do kind of what I've just done. Um, sometimes people need visuals. All right. I can't, I can't type fast, so. Uh, all right. And uh, let's see, we'll put, what, what did we put? Just, uh, I know it says product, but we'll just go with that. Now, uh, you got some basic things here. You guys are the board, but the CEO of Perfect Events and so on. And that will depend, change depending on how, uh, what you put in there. I'm going to slow this down. You can see where my cursor is. I'm going to slow it to half speed. You've got the name of your company and what the product is or consumer goods. Now, the goal here, as you can see in the corner, is $350,000. You want to get to $350,000 for your business. And uh, if you get to minus $100,000, you lose. I mean, this is a, a your company. Here's the hospital. It's important to look at this because you want to see what the uh, resource looks like for these various things in the community, uh, the school, the hospital, so on. Uh, here's your uh, city hall. 
Zero dollars in taxes is based upon the amount of taxes your company has paid. If you don't make money, you don't pay taxes. So right now, they have not collected anything because you're not making money. By the way, you can tell that because it's red down here. You're losing money per day. Uh, police station, those are the resources for the police station. Uh, your fire station, you've got a bucket brigade right now. Uh, here's your passive uh, competitor. Every town must have a law firm. As a lawyer, that's a rule I put in. So every town must have a law firm. Okay? Uh, private eye, and then you've got the shops. So for people who don't have a big idea or a great idea of IP, you can click on these and get the definitions. So throughout here, you can kind of go along if you're playing by yourself, see the definitions, where, the, where I got the definitions. And so you can click on any of those terms and get a definition. So you can do the same with any of these. Trade secrets, again, I got that from WIPO's website. Uh, and then what you've got to do is, of course, you've got to compete. And you've got to decide what you're going to do. And everything that's here is based somewhat upon intellectual property. So all the decisions to make money here is based on actions you take related to IP. So what are some of the things you would do? And we kind of did that through this process over here. What do you want to spend money on? Now that these two are triggered after you make other decisions. That's why it's a little lighter in color. Any thoughts? Where do you want to spend some money? Or don't you want to spend any money yet? Okay. Now it tells you why you might, might uh, decide to make a logo. So for people who aren't really keen on this stuff, it's a little uh, self-taught, or you can help them along as a facilitator. And once you've made a logo, of course, um, you've got these choices. Now, in this case, we've got more of a service than we do uh, a product. But some of these things will still come into play because when you look at some of the other things that are down here, the plus signs tell us that uh, you, can, you can choose to do that as many times as you would like during the game. And let me show you this thing here. If, you, if I pick uh, radio marketing, and you're doing that for brand identity and so on, that radio marketing goes on for 30 days. I've got it at half speed. So normal speed is one second equals one day, and that's what's going on right here. That's your counter. So if you speed it up to double speed, it's half a second is a day. So things start moving pretty quickly if you do that. Um, so you can see here we've got uh, our month is ticking along. Once that month is done, you could go back and do the radio marketing again, but you have to wait till that time has elapsed. Okay? So you could do those kinds of things over and over. The other thing you can come over here and do is take a look at some things. Uh, we made a couple decisions already. Is there anything that strikes you here? Trademark. And again. We talked about this point earlier about you know why would somebody register, spend the money to register the mark? And it basically is to establish your IP with the official government office. We started at 100,000, we're down to 25,000. Oh, let me show you a few other things. You can adjust the price up and down. So you can do that. You can take a look at your market share in a couple different ways. Pie chart, a graph, and of course the numerical way of doing that. Now. Remember I said what we need to do is show people about the IP related to the economic development. Well, in this particular case, you can do things like that. Remember, this is your company. You're paying taxes if you start making money to City Hall, and hopefully, if you don't have a corrupt government, they will put money into these things so that the resources and so on start to improve. And what we're trying to do here is let people see the local economy. Let them see it. Um, if, what are your expenses? In this particular case, your expenses are to the people who are going to provide you with raw materials. And in this case, it might be paper and so on and so forth for your events. Um, by paying those people, they send you back the materials. So what we want to do is let people actually see the interconnections within a local economy. Now, obviously, you can expand this out. But in a very basic and simple way, we let people see these things. Um, and then, of course, we've got shops. Eventually, hopefully, we'll send money to you if you start selling. I could get this thing going, and you'll have arrows and so on going all over the place. It gets a little messy. And you can turn it on just as a reminder anytime as you are 
facilitating the play of the game. If you've been making money, uh, guess what else has happened? You've been started to make, pay taxes because you've made money. And remember, at the very beginning, that was a zero. And oh, it just popped up there quite a bit, actually. Um, and you can check here to see if anything else has changed. We've added a bed to the uh, hospital. Uh, I think we've added a couple students. Uh, I don't think much has changed there, no. But that's the other thing. Keep reminding your group of people how what you're doing and what you're deciding may be having an impact on the local economy. But see, you, you've taken a negative and turned it into a positive by spending money. So you do have money coming in. Uh, and you know, you could look at the shops and say, well, right now we haven't done a whole lot. We still don't have much of a sophisticated economy here in that sense. Uh, not much going on there. Well, th these guys are doing real well. So far, let's see. Well, we don't have, uh, well, you've done, so far, you've done everything that's possible. You've done the trademark registration. You've used the orange circle uh, symbol, and you've copyrighted your ad marketing content. You don't have a website right now. Okay. Well, now the question becomes, do you want to change what you've been doing or keep doing what you uh, were doing? Oh. All right, now it's TV time. Okay. So what you see here is you notice that the improvement there, you know who that is, don't you? Do you remember? Those are the people you're paying for your raw materials and supplies. You've been making money. You've been paying them to send you raw materials and so on, so they've been able to improve. Now, you do have to keep a close eye on things. Because as with any economy, you know, when you're doing well and more people are being attracted to a town because they believe that there may be jobs and so on, things will happen. And you will have to adapt to those things that change or whatever. So you do have to keep your eyes on the bottom line and so on. Um, just so you can see it, uh, there is an enforcement tab for a reason. Because eventually, if, if you make enough money, if you make enough money, obviously you will run into a problem, as in any real economy. But you do have to make a lot of money for that to happen. So we've got a ways to go. But again, you can take a look and see what's gone on with some of the things uh, here in this town and the resources. Uh, the hospital's gotten a little bigger. Uh, City Hall, well, there we go, just in time. City Hall, we've paid a lot of taxes now. We are contributing to the local economy. And we have tended to say, or not say, why? Well, we made some money. What happened? Profits are going down. Let me slow it down. Uh, let me see the pie chart. Ah, what happened? An infringer. So now is when this tab comes into play. You want to spend money or go with free? Well, I heard free first. All right, contact the police. Uh, you know, I, uh, we've used this here a number of times uh, with foreign government officials. I've used it with college p uh, students, with foreign government officials. And it's just a different way of getting them involved in thinking about IP. And uh, so I appreciate the chance to uh, talk to you this morning. I appreciate your involvement and uh, interaction with me. And uh, thank you very much. And enjoy the rest of today, tomorrow, on all this uh, IP stuff. So thank you.